Hi everybody and welcome to the pronunciation bootcamp from myself, Billy English and Elsa. So we're going to have a look at a lot of interesting topics in this webinar. First of all, we're going to look at some sounds and there will be a sound practice. Then we'll have a look at word stress. And if we have enough time, maybe even an extra practice on consonant clusters. And there will be a lot of time for question and answers in between. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to have a look at two sounds that are often mixed up. First of all, we have a V and then we have B. And I know a lot of times my learners confuse the two or think that they are the same or they find it difficult to hear the difference. Let's have a look how we form these two sounds. So first of all, we're going to start with V. And I want you to really focus on my lips and tell me if you can see my teeth or not when I make the sound V. V. Now, it should be pretty obvious that my teeth are visible. The top teeth touch the bottom lip. V. V. I'm adding a bit of a vowel sound at the end as well, just to make it clearer. But this is a voiced consonant. You can put your hand lightly on your throat. V, you can feel vibration that tells you this is a voice sound. It's a consonant and it is also a fricative. And this is V, V. Now, what about the next sound, B? Now again, have a look at my lips here. B, B. What's different? Here, both my lips have to close when I make the sound B. And they are released and there's this little puff of air coming out and this is actually what creates the sound. B, B. Again, it's a voiced sound, it's a consonant, but this is not a fricative, this is a plosive sound. So let me repeat the two sounds again. First of all, we had V, and then the second sound is B. And if you cannot hear the difference as clearly, hopefully you'll be able to see the difference though when I make them V, B. It's a different way of articulation. Let's have a look at some example words for both sounds. We're going to start with V, okay? And you can see I have a range of words listed here. I'm going to say them out loud and I would encourage you to say them after me so you can practice and improve your pronunciation. Let's start. Very, very. Word number two, vet, vet. And you can see I put some pictures on the side and this is really to help you with the meaning of the words. I couldn't really find an image to illustrate the meaning of very. It just means really. It's to emphasize something. Um, but then from vet, from word number two onwards, I have images. So you can have a look here. You can see a photo of a doctor with an animal because a vet is a doctor looking after animals. So vet, vet. Word number three, vote, vote. For example, in an election, vote. Then we have another word underneath. Vest. Vest. This is an item of clothing usually worn by a man. And the last word is vase. Now here we actually have two different pronunciations. British pronunciation is vase, but American pronunciation is vase. Vase. For our practice, I'm going to go with the American pronunciation. You will find out very soon why. So let's read them one more time quickly. Very, vet, vote, vest, vase. 
Very good. Now let's have a look at words with B, our second sound. Here we have berry and you can see I illustrated those words as well with an image. Berry, bet, boat, best, base. Let's read them out one more time. Berry, bet, boat, best, base. Now hopefully you've noticed something with those two groups of words. On the one side we have all the words with V and on the other side we have the words with B. And they are almost identical really. The only difference is that very first sound, V or B. And everything else is the same, all the rest. And that was also why we wanted to say vase. <laughs> The American pronunciation and not vase because otherwise it would not be the same as base. Now those kind of words if they if we have a pair of words that are almost the same and they only differ in one sound and that sound is in the same position we have a special word for this we call it a minimal pair. So those words are minimal pairs very and berry form a minimal pair and the same for vet, bet, vote, boat, vest, best, vase and base. Now so minimal pairs can be a bit tricky, difficult because they sound so similar so you really have to listen out for that initial sound here and you need to listen out and find out is it a v or a b because otherwise you just don't know what the speaker says and also when you speak you need to make sure you get the word right so that people understand your message. So we're going to do a little test. I'm going to read out one of the words, only one in each pair and you need to listen carefully, write the word down and then see if you are right. And if you're watching this live, you can put your answers in the live chat. But if you're watching it back, you can also put them in the comment section. Okay, so are you ready? We're going to start. Here we go. Word number one, berry. Word number two, vet. Word number three, vote. Word number four, best. And the final word is vase. Write your answers in the chat and then let's see if you are right. I'm going to reveal the answers now. The first word was berry. Berry. The second word, vet. Vet. Word number three, vote, vote. Word number four, best. And word number five, vase, vase. Now, how many did you get right out of the five? Put your score in the live chat or in the comment section if you're watching this back and let me know how many out of the five you got right and if there was a word that was particularly difficult. Now there was a question that came up when we talked about V and B in the live webinar and the question was from one of my Arabic speaking students, what is the difference between B and P? And this is a good question because especially for Arabic speakers where in Arabic you don't really have the sound P, it can be quite difficult to understand the difference. Now let's have a look again quickly how we make the two sounds. So B we talked already about, both lips closed, B. And remember I told you this was a voiced sound, B, B. Now P is actually produced in exactly the same way and the only difference is P, P. 
can hear it's a lot quieter and that is because I do not use my vocal cords but both my lips are closed they're released suddenly air comes out and that's actually what produces the sound p, p. and you can kind of see the difference when you use a piece of paper and you say the sound voiceless can see this little puff of air it kind of makes the paper move whereas b is a lot softer we use our vocal cords so the air that comes out isn't quite as strong so b and p and there are minimal pairs in english with b and p as well for example pin and bin and many more so those are really important sounds as well i have a little shorts video with a practice on b and p on my channel so if you want to learn a little bit more about those two and practice check out that video i'll link to it below in the comments now for those of you who have not really watched many of my videos or you don't know my channel remember i'm billy english i have a youtube channel I will always post a new video every Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon, usually with a live chat. So you can meet me in the chat, ask questions. You can also find me on Facebook, but you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Here I post Tuesdays and Saturdays, and those videos are a little bit more about vocabulary and grammar. Whereas on YouTube, I mainly teach on speaking and pronunciation and phonology. So check out those accounts as well and come and follow me, send me a little message. I'm always eager to hear what you want to learn um, or what you find difficult. And um, so send me a message and I might make a video on exactly that topic. Now let's continue. Let's have a look at our next set of sounds. Here we want to have a look at two vowel sounds. And the two vowel sounds are E and E. Now, there's a difference here in the two sounds, and I'm just going to make them again so you can hear it very clearly. E, E. The first one is long. This is a long vowel sound, and you can see this in the symbol. There are two little dots next to the sound symbol. That really means this is a long vowel sound. Whereas on the other hand, E, no two dots and that means it's a short vowel sound now long vowel sounds you can really produce them for as long as you have breath for example e and so forth i've got quite a lot of breath i could probably go on for a minute now with e that is not possible e and that's it okay you do not like lengthen this it would make it a long sound I is short. Now, how do we produce these two sounds and what's the difference? Because again, not every language differentiates between long and short vowel sounds. I know Spanish doesn't. There are only five vowel sounds in Spanish and we have 20 in English and we separate long and short vowel sounds. So that's a lot more compared to Spanish. And so Spanish speakers find that a little bit difficult. But I promise you can learn to hear the difference and you can also learn to pronounce the difference. So a little bit about the terminology. I use the words long and short. Most student books will use the same. However, if you study phonology, you might have heard two other terms, tense and lax, and they really mean the same. Now, it'll become a little bit more obvious why tense and lax when I talk about how we make those sounds. So let's have a look at the first one, E. Now, the lips are spread and it really looks a little bit like I'm smiling. E, E. Usually when people take a photograph, they say cheese. In English and that is just really so that they smile and they look happy in the photograph now what is important though is I want you to say the sound and pay attention not just to your lips but to your tongue e I always feel like my tongue is also really spread out it almost feels a little bit like a tablecloth that really wants to cover the whole table 
E or like a blanket. So it's kind of stretched. And this is again, if I go back one step, why we call it a tense sound because the tongue is kind of tense. It's stretched out. Whereas with the short sound, I, I, we relax our cheeks, we relax our lips, and we also relax our tongue. I. It's in a relatively neutral position, not as neutral as the schwa sound, but fairly neutral. So there's a difference really in the, the way we form our, or we position our tongue. The long sound is really more tense and the position of the, the tongue is, is with more tension and in the short sound, it's more relaxed. So hopefully that will help you remember those names. But let's go back to our sound E. So like I said, E, spread your lips, spread your tongue, E, and hold that sound. E, E. And let's have a look at a couple of words with a long E sound. And I hope you know these words. Meet, see, people. And I've highlighted where in the word E is. So you can also see that E can be represented with different spelling. Meet, we have double I. This is a very, very, sorry, double E. This is a very, very typical spelling pattern for the long E sound. In C, we have EA. Again, this is also very typical. And then people, EO, that's not so typical. Um, but it can also happen. All of those are pronounced with E. Meet, see, people. Now let's have a look at I. It's more relaxed. It's a short sound, I. Let's have a look at a couple of example words. It, sit, with. I'll repeat. It sit with so it's really short it's more relaxed and it isn't a long sound now the spelling is really easy you can see it's always spelled with an i that's the easy part about this sound <laughs> spelling pattern is incredibly easy now we're going to do a little game for you to practice and tune in your ear a little bit more to e and e I'm going to show you objects and I want you to name them. Again, if you're watching this live with me, put your answers in the live chat and I will check them. If you're watching it back, you can also put them in the comments. I would say quickly get a hold of a pen and paper so you can write them down and then I will reveal the answers afterwards. Here we go, first image. And the second one. Now, and remember, you have to name the image, but each of the objects or images should give should be given a name with either E or E. So, for example, for picture number one, if you just write down boat, um, well, that won't work <laughs> because boat does not have an E or an E sound. So think of another word to describe this image that contains either E or E. Okay, so next image and another one a vegetable have a careful look what kind of vegetable that is and another animal and another object and again here you cannot write down chair no there's no e or it in chair it has to be another word And this is a small mountain. What do we call a small mountain? It's not really a mountain. It's far too small for that. What do we call it? And then here we need to have a verb. This is an action. And another object. And this is the leftover of a fruit. What do we call this? Not the fruit, but the leftover. And here we want to have the word for these face parts and another vegetable. And this again is a verb. This is an action. 
What's the boy doing? And last but not least, we want to have um, the word for this type of shoe in short form. Okay, hopefully you were able to name them all. Let's have a look at the answers you can compare if you've got them right. So first of all, we had a ship, then a chick, next the word sit, then we have heel. I know officially we call it high heels, but we just go for heel now. Bins, pill, bean. I know some of you probably thought those were peas, but we're going to go for bean because really, if you have a look at them, those are not peas around, these are beans. <laughs> then peel banana peel, the skin of the banana, sheep, those are my cheeks, a seat, we'd use that word for example in an airplane or a cinema or a theater, you don't really say chair but seat, that vegetable is called a leek, it's not a spring onion, it's thicker than that, and the small mountain was a hill. One of you asked me, is this also called a summit? And I said, no, because summit is only the top of a mountain. We wouldn't say that a hill has a summit. It's only for a mountain and only for the mountain top. So here, just use the word hill. It's a small mountain. And last but not least, the last verb was lick. Okay, so what are we going to do with all these lovely words? Now, the question is, do these words contain a long or a short E? So is it E or E? So I'm going to go give you two minutes and you need to put the words in the right category. Say them out loud to yourself and think, is it E or E? So two minutes. We're going to do quickly one example, just to help a little bit. Okay, so for the first one, I'm going to say it, and you can put your answer in the chat. Ship, long or short e? Ship. This is a short e, exactly, well done. And maybe one more example, just to make sure you really know what to do. Um, the next one, heel, heel, long or short? Yes, this is a long E, heel. It's not hill, it's heel. Okay, very good. So you're going to get two minutes now. Try and put them in the right category and then we're going to continue. Okay, hopefully you were able to put them in the right group. Let's have a look at the answers now. So I put them already in the two groups. Um, first of all, we have all the words with a long E on the left hand side and the images. And then on the right hand side, we have all the words with a short E. So quickly compare them to your answers, see if you got them all right. And have a look at the typical spelling. So again, first of all, for long E, the typical spelling is really double E or EA. It's a very, very common spelling for a long E sound, although EA could also sometimes lead to a different vowel sound, okay? So it's not always a long E, it could be another vowel sound as well. But the short E, really easy, it's always an, an I, okay? So there's uh, that is at least an easy spelling. <laughs> Here you can really remember that. Um, but of course, um, an I could also be pronounced as I in English. So again, like, it's not that easy, English spelling, 
I know, I apologize. It's not that logical. You do have to memorize very often the spelling and the pronunciation separately and just remember them together. So we want to practice though the pronunciation of these and you hopefully noticed that these are minimal pairs again. So we'll start with the long E first. I'm going to say the word and I encourage you to repeat the word after me. Sheep, sheep, seat, seat, heel, heel, leak, leak, cheek, cheek, bean, bean, peel, peel. Wonderful. And let's move on to the short I. Ship. Sit. Hill. Lick. Chick. Bin. Pill. Now, like I said, these are minimal pairs. Sheep, ship, seat, sit heel, hill, really in those pairs of words everything is the same apart from that one sound in the same position and the difference is only long or short and that makes them minimal pairs and so they sound quite similar. Now again we're going to do a little test. Which one do I say? So out of the seven pairs I'm only going to say one of the words. You have to type the word that you can hear and then later you can check. Let's see if you can get seven out of seven. Okay, let's start. Word number one, sheep. Word number two, seat. Word number three, hill. Word number four, lick. Word number five, cheek. Word number six, bean. And word number seven, pill. Now, let's reveal the answers and you can check how many you got right. My first word was sheep. Number two, seat. Number three, hill. Number four, lick. Number five, cheek. Number six, bean. And number seven, pill. How many did you get right? Write down your score in the live chat or in the comment section below. Out of the seven, hopefully you got a full house seven out of seven. But even if you only got five out of seven, that's also really, really good. It's good practice. It all starts with regular practice. And first of all, you need to be able to hear the difference before you can really produce the difference yourself. Now, remember that you can practice all of those sounds on Elsa Speak, the app. Now, there's a certain amount of lessons that are for free. You can just download Elsa, play around with it, try out a couple of lessons and see if you like it. If you would like to have access to all of the content, all of the lessons, remember you have to purchase Elsa Speak Pro. If you use my link below in the comment section, you can get a discount 30% off on a one year pro membership and 80% off on a lifetime pro membership. Now in the skills section, you can see underneath here in my screenshots, you have the home, the skill section, the coach, etc. In the skills section, you have different skills and all of the sounds of English are covered. And I've written down four and eight because Skill eight is where we practice w, v, and b, and skill four is where we practice e and e. But of course, all of the sounds are covered, also b and p, and many, many more. So whatever sound you struggle with, there will be a skill section dedicated to it. There's also one on linking, consonants, etc. You might have seen, if you tried Elsa before, you might have seen some of my videos embedded there. And it's a really great app. You can practice, you can listen to example words and sentences, and then you can speak 
and Elsa will give you immediate feedback with their AI technology. It's really cool. Try it out. Now, there was a question that came up before, and that was, are it and eat pronounced in the same way? Now, the answer is no. This is a minimal pair again. It, eat. So it, the pronoun, has a short i sound, it, but eat, eat food, eat the verb, long e. So they are not the same. It and eat, there's a difference in pronunciation and obviously also in meaning. Now, now next we want to have a look at word stress. Word stress. Why is word stress important and what is it exactly? Now, let's have a look at this image here to illustrate this and answer the question. So let's look at the photograph of this delicious meal. Now, this is usually the last course of a meal. If you go to a restaurant or you cook something nice at home, you probably eat this last. Now, how do we really pronounce the word for this part of the meal. So we've got the spelling down here and then we see some bubbles. Now each bubble stands for a syllable. So that really means two bubbles, two syllables because des, et, there are two syllables in this word. The question is, is the first syllable stressed or the second? Now, Big bubble means stressed syllable and small bubble means unstressed. So the question is, do we say desert or dessert? What do you think? Put your answer in the chat. Is the correct pronunciation with the stress on the first syllable desert or on the last syllable dessert? Now, for that, I just want to show you the answer <laughs> and also another image. Now, the correct pronunciation for this yummy meal with the strawberries is dessert. Stress on the last syllable. If we say desert and we stress the first syllable, yes, we do pronounce a word in English, but it's the place with a lot of sand like the Sahara Desert. Also in spelling, you can see there's a difference. Desert is spelled with double S and desert only with one. However, the problem is usually when we speak, so we don't really see the spelling. So word stress is really what counts. When you talk about something sweet that you have at the end of your meal, dessert. And you can remember this because the dessert has the stress on the last syllable because it is the last meal. Now, desert has the stress on the first syllable. Okay, it's exactly the opposite. Now, stressed syllables, let's talk more about them. When a syllable is stressed in a word, that usually means it's longer, it's also a bit louder, and there is a higher pitch. Pitch is really can think about it a little bit like um, the tone or the volume of your voice not quite the volume it's more the tone how high or how low your voice is so a, a stressed syllable has a slightly higher tone than an unstressed syllable let's look at another example here we have another food item a fruit a banana banana we have three syllables here and the middle one is stressed. We say banana, banana. It is not a banana. No, that would sound very odd with the stress on the first syllable. And it is also not a banana, banana. No. You can see if I place the word stress to the wrong and onto the wrong syllable, it really changes the way the word sounds. It has a huge impact on the pronunciation and it can actually disguise a word so that listeners will not recognize it anymore. So the correct pronunciation, banana, banana. 
Now, let's practice some more and let's have a look at some rules regarding word stress in English. You do not have a rule for everything, but there are some general rules and if you know them, that can make it a lot easier to get the word stress right. So here on this slide, you see a group of words in the big box um, at the top. We've got a number of words <clears throat> and then in the table below, we have three groups and we need to group the words. So let's have a look. We have unimportant, window, comfortable, record, city, object, happy, development and present. Group one, we want to put words in here that are common nouns or adjectives and then have exactly two syllables. And there are three in the box. Can you find them? Put them in the chat. And let's have a look if you are right. We have window, city, and happy. All of them have exactly two syllables. Window and city are nouns. Happy is an adjective. Now let's go back again. Group number two, we want to find words with a prefix or a suffix. Now prefixes and suffixes are little, little bits of words. They're not really words on their own. They don't really have meaning on their own. But for example, in, un, miss, or fullness, meant, those are prefixes or suffixes. So let's have a look if you can find three words that have either a prefix or a suffix or maybe even both. And the answers are here. Unimportant, un is a prefix to make a negative adjective. Comfortable, the able here is a suffix to make also an adjective. And then development, we have meant another suffix to form a noun. And group number three, I just have to go back quickly. Those are words that can be both a noun and a verb with identical spelling. Let's have a look if we can find three in our in our table it should be fairly obvious now since we put the others already in the group we have record object and present now the question is how do we pronounce them where is the stress and is there a common pattern and therefore a rule that we can find for each group okay we're going to start with group number one <clears throat> I'm going to say the words and I want you to listen and tell me if they are all stressed on the same syllable. And because there are only two, it's either the first or the last. So listen carefully. Window. City. Happy. First or last syllable. Hopefully it was pretty clear that the first syllable is stressed. And that is really rule number one. Most common nouns and adjectives that have two syllables in English are stressed on the first. Window, city, happy. We do not say window, city, happy. No. Sounds like I have a French accent. <laughs> happy. I am happy. No, I'm happy. Now, of course, there are exceptions, as always. But there's a, definitely a big group of nouns and adjectives that fall into this group and they have the stress on the first syllable. Let's have a look at group number two. I'm going to say the words out loud and I want you to listen and tell me if the prefixes and suffixes are stressed or not. Unimportant. Comfortable. Development. Are the prefixes and suffixes stressed? No, they are not. Now, I highlighted the prefixes and suffixes again for you so you can see them clearly. Unable, meant. Those are un, un is the prefix, able, meant the suffixes, and no, they are not stressed. In fact, important, comfort, and develop 
Those are what we call the root words or the base words. And that stress pattern, whatever that stress pattern was for this word, important, here it's in the middle, comfort, here it's on the first syllable, and develop, here develop, develop on the second syllable, they retain the same stress pattern. So we do not stress prefixes and suffixes. It's unimportant, comfortable, not comfortable by the way, comfortable, and development. And what about our last group? Those words can be verbs or nouns. Now I'm going to read them out as verbs first and I want you to listen to the stress. Can you hear where the stress is placed? Record, object, present. That's the pronunciation for the verbs. Now let's listen to them again if they act as nouns. Record, object, present. The pronunciation changes, but really what changes is the stress in the word. So hopefully you were able to hear the difference. So we have verbs, those are stressed on the second syllable, and then nouns, and they are stressed on the first syllable. And there are many words that fall into this category. They are words that have exactly two syllables and they can be nouns and verbs and the stress will tell you if they are a noun or a verb. Insult, insult. Permit, permit. Produce, produce. Increase, increase. And many more, I could go on and on. There's quite a big group of words. So remember, um, when you see those words, um, really pay a little bit of attention. What is their function in the sentence really? Is it a verb or a noun? And then make sure you get the stress right and your pronunciation is correct. Now, let's practice them one more time. I'm going to start with group one. Window, city, happy. Group number two, unimportant, comfortable. Excuse me, once more. Comfortable. Development. And group number three, first the verbs. Record. Object. Present. And then the nouns. Record. Object. Present. Good. If you want to find out a little bit more about word stress and also some more rules regarding word stress, there are more rules, then do please have a look at my channel. I've got an entire playlist with short videos going over all of the other rules as well. And if you want to find out a little bit more about word stress, there's also a longer video on my channel that you can watch as well. Now, um, um, so the question was really from one of the viewers, are there more rules for word stress in English? And the answer, like I said, yes, there are. And you can find out more in the playlist that I just told you about. Now, the last practice is really on some ending sounds. Now, those can also be a little bit difficult for learners. And we call those ending sounds when we have a lot of consonants together, consonant clusters, clusters, because they're all next to one another and there's no vowel in between. And so that can really make the pronunciation more difficult. So we're going to have a look at a couple of examples here just to illustrate that. So asked, for example, changed and breakfast. Here we have consonant clusters at the end. Now again, you cannot go by the spelling because in the spelling for asked, for example, there is an E. But really, when we say the word, the E is silent, okay? We do not pronounce it. In fact, the ED is a T sound, asked. And there's something else that happened. If you listen carefully, asked, the K is kind of dropped to make it a bit easier. Then we have changed, N, J, D next to one another and breakfast. Here we actually have a consonant cluster at the start with BR and then again at the end with ST breakfast. So those are consonant clusters and we're going to really focus on consonant clusters at the end of words because 
Um, those can be particularly difficult and we're going to practice a few of them. We're going to start with the cluster pt, pt. And that's an unvoiced cluster pt. It's relatively quiet actually. Just practice saying it. It's p and t next to one another. Pt, pt, pt. Now let's go over some words that end in pt. And again, don't be confused by the spelling. The I is silent. First up, stopped, stopped, helped, helped. Here we actually have lpt, three consonants next to one another. Helped, helped, hoped, hoped, stepped, stepped. Very good, okay? If you find them difficult, practice them a few times. I would say pronunciation practice is a little bit like going to the gym or practicing an instrument. You do not become an expert by doing nothing. You have to practice. And as you practice, you build up muscle memory. And that muscle memory, that is really what helps you to speak fast. So stopped, helped, hoped, stepped. Practice a little bit every day if you find it difficult and I promise you in two weeks, you'll be much, much quicker and it will be much easier. Now let's have a look at another consonant cluster. This time it's kt, kt, kt. So we have k, another plosive, k, also unvoiced and t, kt. And here are our example words. Worked, worked, liked, liked, parked, parked, cooked, cooked. One more time, quickly. Worked, liked, parked, cooked. Excellent, good job, well done. Now, I hope you have time for one more. Ft. Again, unvoiced consonant, f, and then followed by t. Ft. Ft. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of words. Surfed, surfed, coughed, coughed. I know coughed, laughed, funny spelling. Here the GH is really a f sound. Coughed, coughed is <coughs> In the past tense. Laughed, laughed, and stuffed, stuffed. Stuff is also a verb, it means to fill something, and then in the past it's stuffed, stuffed. Very good, okay. Now this was excellent practice. Now you need to give yourself a little bit of a rest. You've done a lot of good work, so well done. If you have any questions about anything that we've discussed in practice, please put it in the comments below. Or if you have another question about something related to English pronunciation, also leave me a comment. I'm always looking for new topics for new videos and I'd be very happy to help you. Now, thank you for attending this webinar or for watching it back on my channel. And I hope you really learned something new and you found it valuable. Remember, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Be lovely to see you there as well. Or come back again next week, Wednesday at 4 o'clock for my next video. Bye for now.